I have always been struggling with accessibility in my projects. And interestingly, 96% of websites have the same problem. They are not accessible and yours might be affected too. This means that you're not only missing out on potential clients or the perfect SEO ranking in Google, but you might also get hit by a lawsuit like it was the case for Domino's Pizza. So let's make the web more accessible by learning about ARIA attributes. ARIA stands for Accessible Rich Internet Applications. The first attribute you should learn is role. ARIA roles provide semantic meaning to content, allowing screen readers and other tools to present HTML elements correctly to a disabled user. If you have been using your semantic HTML elements correctly, like nav, header, footer, etc., then you actually applied a role to your elements, as all of these elements carry an implicit role per default. It describes the context of the element within the accessibility object model. Much like the document object model, the accessibility object model is a tree of objects that represent your website. Screen readers depend on the information that is listed in the AOM where every HTML element is described so that a disabled person can make sense of what we can see because the screen reader will read aloud the website to them. If you only use div containers for everything, then they can't make sense of what the element was used for. But if you use the nav tag for example, then they know that this element is your nav bar. So I urge you to definitely use the correct semantic HTML elements whenever they make sense. But then you might run into the problem that many HTML elements totally suck. If you ever wanted to style an option select dropdown, then you know that it's impossible to make it look good. So you might be tempted to create your own custom dropdown with a bunch of divs, which is not optimal for accessibility. In all of these cases where we cannot use a semantic HTML element because HTML doesn't have a fitting one, or we don't want to use the existing one, then we should define the role attribute ourselves. So accessibility rule number one, if you can, don't use ARIA and use semantic HTML instead. And only if there is no other way, use an ARIA attribute like role to define the role of that element. This is a list of possible roles that you could assign, but be careful when defining a role. It's actually better to not use one than using the wrong role, because that will confuse everyone. Don't come up with your own names and only use the ones that are listed in the documentation. Also, if you're already using a semantic HTML element, then don't define a new role on them. They already have an implicit role. If you're now a bit scared to use that, you might want to hear more about the ARIA label, which is much more harmless. The ARIA label defines a string value that labels an interactive element. Let's say we have an X button that closes a pop-up. The screen reader is just going to read button X, which has no meaning to a blind person. For these types of interactive elements that don't give away much information, we can define an ARIA label and describe shortly what it does. So the screen reader is going to read close newsletter pop-up. But sometimes we don't need to repeat ourselves if another element already describes our content. For example, whenever you use images, you should use the alt attribute to describe the image. If you don't use it, the screen reader will read aloud the file name, which can be incredibly long and nonsensical. And when your image is relevant and only used for styling purposes, then don't provide a description and instead assign an empty string. That way the screen reader will just ignore the image and it doesn't read out the file name. Sometimes you might even provide a description for your image in the form of a real text paragraph then it would be unnecessary to repeat yourself in the alt attribute. In that particular case, you can use the aria labeled by attribute and just assign the ID of the HTML element where you provide the description of the image. So if this paragraph contains the text of the image, assign an ID and reference that exact ID in the correct image attribute aria labeled by. The next accessibility aspect you should know is how to handle interactive elements. Sometimes you click on a button and then some new content expands, like in a custom accordion. In that case, the screen reader should know if the content is expanded or not. On the button that controls the content, use the aria expanded attribute. By default, it is not expanded, so assign false. Then we need to describe what element we are controlling with this. So define aria controls and provide the ID of the element that you are expanding. Now in the JavaScript code used to open and close your content, we need to update the aria expanded attribute and set this to true whenever the content is expanded and false when it is closed. That way, assistive technologies always know when to say what. Overall, there are a lot of ARIA attributes that serve different purposes. Of course, this example is just an oversimplification of how to do it, to explain how ARIA attributes work and what to consider. To make this fully accessible, responsive and free of bugs, there would be more CSS and JavaScript required. So I ask you, is it really worth ditching the default HTML elements for custom-made ones just to get that extra CSS transition working and make it look just a little bit better? Because as you learned in this video, there's a lot of work to be done to make these fully accessible. Of course, then you might also consider using component libraries, which already do a lot of the heavy lifting for you. Let me know in the comments what are your thoughts on this. And if you liked this video, you might also enjoy this video right here. My name is Fabian and this was coding to go I will see you in the next video.